Greetings all, welcome to the IPFS weekly call. We have a very Woo. good group with us, although it, it is a number that doesn't play nicely with my Zoom grid. So I apologize if, oh, one more. We just need one more. <laughs> we don't need that. Our perspective's twisted that much. On a Monday morning or Monday, whatever time it is for y'all. Uh, so we're going to, let me drop the IPFS weekly call agenda document into the chat for those of us who are not yet in it. And this week I thought it would be interesting to hear about, and I do not know how you would pronounce this, but I'm going to take a stab and call it ETH DNS. Would that be accurate? ETH DNS. Arcadi? Absolutely. Yep. And uh, Arcadi has kindly agreed to demo that cool new thing. And uh, time permitting, we're also going to hear Alan Shaw sing the praises of uh, the latest edition of JS IPFS. Development is, is nonstop with that, and uh, we haven't heard uh, the latest in a while. So let's get rolling. Time okay. is of uh, the essence. Arkady. Okay, fantastic. So uh, some of you may have already seen uh, this work in various ways. You may have already, in fact, use this work to host an IPFF uh, hosted uh, in app. Uh, but for those of you who have not, I am going to kind of start at the top uh, and uh, hopefully show you the entire process of registering a name, associating it with uh, some IPFS content, and then resolving it in a normal browser. Wow. OK, so let's get started. Yeah, hopefully this will work. Screen sharing. OK, so uh, for purposes of this demo, uh, we're going to use my personal little portfolio sites, uh, which has a kind of a funny domain name, which also has a nice side effect of generally not being registered anywhere else. So. Uh, just a fair warning, this is a live demo on the Ethereum network, so it will hopefully work, but it will definitely take a little bit of time. And in fact, there's actually a kind of a cool off uh, period during the uh, registration process to prevent front running attacks. So uh, it will be a little bit slow. Okay, so uh, here is uh, the Ethereum name service, and I'm just kicking it off. Uh, without a bunch of explanation, again, in the interest of time. So, okay, let's see. Oh, wow, okay, so this name is available and we can register it for one full year or uh, near 0 0.033 Ethereum. So let's, let's do that, okay. And uh, so this requires us to send uh, a, uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, it requires us to send uh, just a small gas fee to the contract. So here we go. Uh, and uh, there's a, now a waiting minute of one period. Okay. So what is ENS? Uh, it's perhaps something you've encountered before, uh, particularly if you're in the Ethereum world. Uh, it is uh, originally started as a way to associate a human readable name, uh, such as ontological bargains at ETH, uh, rather than uh, merely a uh, address that looks like this uh, for purposes of, of uh, payments uh, and uh, contract indications and things like this. So, for example, you can take a look at Nick.eth, uh, Nick being one of the core developers of ENS, and now, this is his Ethereum address. So if you would like to make a nice donation to the ENS community, send some ETH to nick.eth. Very simple. Uh, you may have also seen this from uh, uh, Telic. Yeah. yeah. So you may have seen, oh, oh no. 
may have seen Vitalik's name on Twitter is Vitalik.it. So uptake is high. So let's see how our registration is doing. Okay, we're still waiting. That's okay. Um, so here is here's one I made earlier. Uh, so one of the really nice things uh, about uh, uh, BNS is that uh, they have a very proper first class support for uh, IPFS as one of the things, uh, or IPFS CIDs rather, uh, as one of the things that your domain can point at. So in this case, uh, we have registered IPFS during the pre-registration period, and it points to a familiar website uh, that, uh, and my apologies for uh, for, for the, the windowsy nature of this demo. I know it hurts your eyes. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm trying to look at the chat. Yes, great. So, and so, you know, this is all well and good, but, you know, where, where is the magic? You know, that's this, this, uh, this is not the most uh, immediately uh, doesn't really roll all the time. So uh, the first way that we've addressed this is through uh, the zoom controls are very precisely. Oh, okay, I can move on. Great. IPFS. So much in the same way, we can register. Uh, we can pull it down from IPFS. That's the link which doesn't necessarily seem that interesting because you know maybe just a wrapper of some kind of proxy you don't really know what it's doing but in fact well, let me see if i can embiggen this yeah is that at all legible for those following along at home great okay so the way that this works is that in the DNS in the DNS world, we have uh, a TXT record in a very familiar format to some of us, uh, which is DNS link. Uh, however, this DNS link is actually uh, coming from uh, uh, an on-chain Ethereum lookup, and I can, I'll show you what does that in a second. And so, similarly. Yeah. Oh, actually, I should probably be using this one. Yeah. And similarly, uh, the A record, which is what points to, uh, you know, the normal web server that's supposed to be backing this domain, uh, for every that link record, uh, it will point to uh, actually the same IP by default. You can override this, but this IP uh, is, in fact, uh, it, <laughs> this is maybe not the most illustrative, but, but it is an IPFS gateway. So pulling the hash over here, oops, we can load it from this particular gateway. And what happens in the case of loading it through IPFS that is that link, uh, is that the gateway uh, is being uh, looking at the host header, uh, which which we're sending it, sees that uh, we're asking for IPFS.eth and pulls that hash from DNS link and loads the content. So this is actually the same way uh, that uh, all our normal websites work. So IPFS.io, blog at IPFS.io, uh, I believe, Lipid2P uh, and Filecoin sites as well. So they're built uh, from a, uh, a static site generator uh, added to IPFS and loaded through DNS link in my the same way. The only difference here is that instead of uh, being registered in traditional DNS, uh, this record is decentralized. Okay, perhaps. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, so I gotta move this. So now we're ready to register. And send our four dollars ninety four cents. You know, those Ethereum prices have uh, have been friendly to the budget of this demo as of late. And uh, of course, the um, the transaction in nature uh, of this does add a little, or does remove a little bit of drama. So while this is cooking. Uh, we can take a look at how all of this weird magic is happening. So, uh, Core DNS is a, uh, a quite popular uh, DNS server, which is uh, similar to Bind or something like that, if you're familiar. And one of the core features of Core DNS uh, is that it is a plugin chaining server meaning that every kind of resolution happens through all these different plugins. And some of them uh, are just normal uh, sort of traditional DNS plugins uh, or traditional DNS resolvers. But uh, amongst them is uh, now the ENS resolver, which uh, connects to uh, a IPFS gateway and to an Ethereum node, and thus brings the magic of, EN, uh, uh, of ENS and IPFS into a request that looks from the position of the browser or uh, any tool uh, as if it were uh, coming from the normal DNS system, which means that uh, tools don't actually have to be ENS aware uh, in order to, uh, to do these resolutions they can simply use the existing DNS link mechanism, which I believe is documented here. Yes. So if you're not familiar with DNS link, hop on over to dnslink.io uh, and learn all about it. So let's see. Oh. Okay, well, the this this may not complete by the end of the demo, but I guess the nice thing is that I'll end up the proud owner of ontological bargains uh, on ENS. Uh, so the really interesting thing that I wanted to dramatically demonstrate is our domain, but which may not work out from a timing perspective, is that uh, we can uh, use uh, some features in. In normal Firefox, this is no, nothing is up my sleeve. In fact, I'm going to uh, disable MetaMask. Just so, you know, uh, rolling up the sleeve, so to speak. Um, so you can use, uh, sorry, I gotta move, move things around the screen. So there's some network settings, which are again, standard. And uh, among those settings, is, uh, hopefully you can read that, is uh, DNS over HTTPS, which actually, my understanding is may not be just shipped, but enabled by default uh, in some builds. And uh, by default, uh, it uses uh, the uh, Cloudflare resolver. Uh, so in, if you're not familiar with DNS over HTTPS, it is essentially a uh, newer approach to doing DNS queries, uh, which are currently unencrypted uh, and uh, you know, very easily uh, uh, monitored uh, by your provider, your network neighbors, and so on. So in the case of DNS over HTTPS, the queries are secured and signed uh, and go to a normal uh, HTTPS endpoint that looks like, you know, slash DNS query. So uh, if we use uh, a resolver uh, that is uh, uh, running our uh, core DNS plugin, we can not only use fairly nice, but ultimately not that interesting uh, domains like IPFS that e that length, 
but actually, oh, look at that. That ETH in the browser backed by IPFS content. And uh, I think, oh, okay, and wonderful. We can maybe, maybe even complete our little task. Yeah. All right, okay, so we gotta, gotta put, put MetaMask back in for this part. Um, so wh while I do this, I will actually open, open the floor to any questions because we're kind of done with the meat. This is the, the prestige part here, which is, uh, Thanks for live demoing. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Everyone can see all my passwords. Fun times. Okay. Any any questions? Any concerns? Dreams? In, in uh, that in that first demo. Uh, uh -huh. So for dot eth dot link, you don't need companion installed, you don't need anything installed, right? That should just work for everyone in that. So that should work for absolutely anyone the same way that uh, IPFS.io currently works for anyone. Uh, and uh, furthermore, you can, uh, you can use this mechanism to retrieve uh, information through any other tool that is not a browser as well. Okay, well, my machine just a uh, for you. People still my hair. I think you froze for a bit. Any, any other, is he gone or merely muted? Now it's time for a round of applause. Yes. Way! <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. <laughs> oh, here you go. Okay, I was, uh, I was crashed out my machine blue screens and my network seems to have failed all at the same time, possibly related yeah. to you only I missed your applause. I, I I I believe in you guys. I think I I, I can I can imagine it. Um, okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. I hand it back there's to a Eric. There's there's a question from Johnny. Oh, okay. Being, what is the question? Being, I, being so polite. <laughs> so, so my question was: um, in oh. IPFS, you actually can publish a, a CID to the IPNS name record, but you also can, uh, that CID could be an IPLD CID. So right now, is it only supporting IPFS um, CIDs or can you also publish IPLD CIDs? So it, it, the content hash field, which is how it's stored uh, on chain, is a, a proper uh, multi-format. Uh, so it should be able to represent uh, uh, those CIDs. Uh, it probably won't give you a very meaningful results when trying to load it in the browser uh, that I can imagine. I mean, it depends on what's in that graph, I guess. But I, I think you should be able to do it today. Yeah. Right. So it's really, so I think, um, so right now IPFS colon is not a registered IANA uh, name scheme. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, so like the just challenge of uh, standards and submitting this for, for standardization. So there's semantic interoperability. And so, um, just more of a comment that it's still a lagging issue. Yeah, so so Dietrich is actually who I hope is still on this call, is probably the person to ask about standardization efforts. Dietrich, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm, we're kind of just starting to get, get, go down that road and I, I recognize your name from the mega meeting about some of this stuff last Friday, Johnny. Uh, but this—that's something that we should 
we should definitely figure out the with browser vendor implementations of IPFS are also starting to ask these questions as well as things like um, you know re re respect for different parts of the IPFS specification and and the P2P as well. So I think right now the plan is 2020 is let's figure out what the boxes are that we need to check here and do the the hard work of of specifying what the behavior be well from things like addressing uh, as well as the core APIs. All right, cool. So is there work right now with the IPFS um, colon it, to, to submit to Diana for it or IETF? I have not started that work. Lytle would probably know more about any of that work. And he wrote up the addressing spec. But as far as I know, we have not submitted. All right, I'd be happy to help out. I think it's just a matter of just submitting it and writing it in a perfect draft and actually submitting it to IETF. I'm on the um, IEEE, uh, so we're, we're working on some of this. And I've been sort of... I don't mm -hmm. want to step on people's toes, but this is like impeding some of my work. So, so it'd be great. To, so I'd be happy to just do the legwork and actually just write it up if it helps, but um, make sure I have full support of, of TL. That, that's fantastic. I'll, I'll reach out. I'll start driving to your house right now. <laughs> cool. No more questions? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, uh uh, what, one comment I will make, sort of inspired by uh, Johnny's uh, uh, question, is that it was surprisingly easy to get the core DNS people to accept this plugin. Honestly, I was concerned that they would be like, what the hell is this? Why is this using a TLD that, that is not uh, a real TLD? And so on. And in, in fact, this was a, a, like a two-day turnaround on the pull request and they seemed thrilled. So, uh, this is, you know, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Cool. Awesome, thanks again. And also, uh, Arkady and Jen, thanks for coordinating your nautical outfits today. Very well done. Uh, we only have a, yeah, <laughs> on point. We only have a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done, shipping. <laughs> uh, Alan, if you have, uh, if you think this is enough time to bring us up to speed on some of the highlights, uh, just uh, top line features and, and improvements that the latest JSI PFS release uh, includes, I'm sure people would be stoked to hear about it. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I can try really quickly. <laughs> uh, let me just share this. All right, here we go. You all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, cool. Do you, oh, wait, hang on. Are my notes over the top of the screen or not? No. Okay, cool. So that means I can see the notes, but you can just see the screen. So that's good. All right, cool. Uh, so um, I just wanted to update you all. JSIBFS 040 is now out. It is the uh, one step closer to CID V1 release. Uh, <laughs> um, the story behind that is basically the, to allow us to use CIDs in domain names. Um, and so at the moment we have, well, we have our gateways, right? We have ipfs.io slash ipfs slash qm hash. Uh, we have like qm hash one, qm hash two. We have lots of hashes all on the same um, domain name. Um, and this is bad because uh, in browsers, the security sandboxes revolve around the domain. So in this case, ipfs.io. So it means that like a website at the qm hash one is the, in the same sandbox as a website at qm hash two. Um, and like, being in the same box is, is a problem because, so for example, like they both have access to the same storage and the same quotas. Um, and so what we want to do is flip that around. So the CID isn't at the end of the URL, it's right at the start. So we'd have qmhash1.ipfs.io, qmhash2.ipfs.io, or something like that, essentially. But that means that the domain is different because we've got two separate domains now and two sandboxes. So we get this security win because we're no longer sharing the same sandbox. Um, so the problem is, right, that domain names are case insensitive. So uh, if I shout google.com to you, uh, it's the same as me just saying google.com in lowercase. Um, but 
the thing is, our CIDs, which are currently V0, are case sensitive. Ugh. So like if we did put a CID in a domain and we changed like an upcase Q to a lowercase Q, you are actually addressing different content. So we can't use our CIDs in domains. Um, so V1 CIDs um, allow us to use case insensitive encoding, uh, which, and we've chosen base32. Currently, we use base58. And that will allow us to use CIDs in domain names. And that's why this release is one step closer to CID V1. Um, and so there are a number of dependencies that we need to resolve before we can switch to V1. And one of them, uh, as you can see in the release notes, is this is a long story, I'm sorry. Uh, this, <laughs> one of the dependencies is that um, we need to migrate a repo. So basically a repo in JS or IPFS is just like a key value store. Um, our keys are currently CIDs um, and our values are whatever that CID um, resolves to. Um, but the problem is that um, the version number is embedded inside the CID. So um, th th there is a problem there because CID v0 and CID v1 can actually refer to the same piece of content. Um, and so what we need to do is change the keys in the store so that we don't include the version number. Um, and, uh, at and that means that we're, if we ask for a piece of content with a CID v1 and we have it but stored under a different key, then we're not going to say we don't have it for whatever reason. So we, for that, we need to do a migration. And so um, what we've added to JS IPFS 040 is a new repo migrations tool so that we can do that when we need to do it. OK, the second thing, second thing here is, um, whoa, here we go. Uh, second thing is that we also want to use IPNS keys in domains too. Um, so just like imagine a glorious future where the domain name for my blog remains the same, but the content gets updated. Crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> IPN IPNS keys are peer IDs, uh, and they're essentially public keys. And what we want to do is also change these to, to use V01 by default. V, uh, V1 CIDs by default. Um, and so what we've done here is we've um, allowed support for base32 encoded peer IDs in IPNS paths. Um, and that's, they are the two biggest highlights for JS IPFS 040. There is other stuff in the release. You should go and check out the blog post at blog.ipfs.io. Um, and I think really that's all I have time to talk to you about. Thanks for listening. Super efficient. Oh my God. And I want you, uh, I wish you were my university professor. You're, I would never fall asleep in your class. Um, so thanks, Alan. Thanks, Arkady. And yeah, I, the, the link to the blog post is in the chat. So everyone, please get the, you know, get the granular details there. And we'll see you next week when we hear from Ian from Peergos, the Peergos. Um, Network peer to peer stuff. Actually, I've got a link for them as well. Thanks very much. Peace out.